Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here in YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy. And it's my latest video. This is a build video, a model build that is the Re Revell Viking ship in 150 scale. We'll take a closer look. Fun build. I like it. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and treasure chase, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model box, and animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormTheCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, so, so t let's take a look. I got this pro this kit from a patron, a patron on Patreon, Paul. Thanks, thanks, Paul. Great little kit. It's 150 scale and a skill level three, which I was surprised by. I was like, that's a little bit of an intermediate skill level. So if you're a beginner, have never done a model before, this is probably not a good place to start. Although it depends, you know, on how handy you are with things. But let's take a look inside. There's the parts. Pretty standard for models. The instructions. There's the sail. See that big white thing? That's the sail. And a lot of string. I was like, uh-oh. That means that's that's a lot of string. And um, that's the reason why this is a skill level three. So here we go. Take a look. There's the hull. Various parts. The mast. Right. Really not a whole lot of parts to this. Well, there are, what? 32, uh, let me, 16, 30, 64 shields. See those shields? So I guess maybe that qualifies as a lot of parts. But um, they're easy to do. We're going to do those. We're going to paint them. And we're going to apply the decals and stuff. And uh, it's a bit of tedious work there for the things. But there's the sail, and we'll cut that out and apply that. And let's take a look at the decals. Oh, there's the string. There's actually two strings, one thicker string like that. See that piece? That's the rope for the anchor. And the, all of that is all the rigging string. And there we go, the decals. There's a lot of decals. Uh, excuse and 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 these aren't like peel and stick. There's a special process you use with decals on a model, plastic model. We're going to do that process. If you've never watched any of my other videos on making models, you'll see that's kind of that'll be new for you. All right, so that's all the parts. Let's get started on this. Oh, and the instructions, which tell you everything, including what colors to paint it, what to glue, what not to glue, and how to put it together step by step. So let's get started. First thing you should always do with a plastic model like this is rinse it off in warm, soapy water. That removes any oils and uh, cleans it, gets it ready so it'll be painted well and the decals will apply well. And that's right in the instructions tell you to do this. And then let them air dry on paper towels. Don't try to wipe them dry. Um, you could knock off the, some of the smaller, more delicate pieces. Just let them air dry, be patient about it. So once that's all dry, let's get started on what we do. See, like I said, here's all the various tips you use, what to do, what to glue, what not to glue, what, how different assemblies, and the different colors you use, and all the parts, and then step by step, how to assemble them. And the first thing you do is you put the two halves of the hull together. So let's do that. And here's a tip for you when cutting parts off the sprue. The sprue is that like network of plastic that holds everything together. Use a sharp knife to cut things off the sprue that is much better. Don't try to like tear pieces off the sprue because um, you can distort them, particularly the small pieces, you know, so you can kind of make trouble for yourself there. Just cut them off with a sharp knife like this. Thinking about what I'm going to do with this model, where I'm going to put it, I might put it even in the mead section of my website. That'd be fun. And then check for little nibs and um, see that little distortions and stuff from the sprue and remove them and you can remove them with a knife because they may affect assembly you might not be able to put pieces together correctly so you just remove those little nibs I think there's a technical name for that and you can also use an emery board or, it's, or sandpaper emery paper to just smooth those them out Now here's a big thing when you're making a plastic model. You should always test fit every piece before you glue it in. So that's what I'm doing here with the two halves of the hull. I am testing it. See everything fits together, make sure none of the nibs are getting in the way, everything's correct. I have it oriented right, I'm doing it right. See? And, and that's important, you should always do that. 
everything looks good here this is going these two pieces are going to go together well I've got it all right nothing's backwards and then I can go ahead and glue it and you know this isn't actually gluing it's cementing and interesting thing about this this stuff is the cement actually melts the plastic so you're not really gluing things together you're actually bonding them together because you're melting the plastic into each other and that's an interesting thing and that's why it works particularly well for models and in this video I'm going to use two different types of um, cement you, you, I'll show you but there we go let's get these first part done and one thing I did like about this model is that putting together the hull like this and starting with that um, made it a little easier for me to take all the videos see and then um, the instructions recommend you tape those hull pieces together to let that cement set and I started with tape and then I added some little clamps which are really kind of neat I love the little clamps from model building so from there it's just um, continue on go on to the next step in the process identify the part remove the part from the sprue clean it up with a knife or a sandpaper emery board test fit it make sure you got it right it's in the right place it's in the right orientation everything fits well and then glue it in cement it in and that's it so you do a lot of that pretty standard model making stuff you know I used to love to make models when I was a kid and I'm so happy to return to them now later in life I've got a whole bunch of them if you if you're interested in the models I do a lot of them I have uh, how many do I have I have them here on a, on a, on a bookshelf but I, I have I don't know 10 15 I have a lot of them so there we go clamp it in let it let it set and here's another thing I was saying you know you put the base on this um, Viking ship really early which is really kind of nice because then I could kind of set the camera up and start adding parts and get some reasonably good um, video because sometimes I have a difficult time getting good video with making model because I have to hold the model close to myself so I can see the little parts and but this one is kind of neat now we add in the what's that called the deck the deck of the Viking ship and here's the other type of cement I like this Tamiya extra thin cement for some applications and um, it really works well because there are these little tiny cleats that go inside the ship I'm not going to show you much of that but it's a little tiny cleat that goes in there there's a bunch of them there's a half a dozen of them and I was wondering I was like wow that's some detail work and why am I putting these little cleats in there you'll find out later why oh those those paints there um those were also given to me by a gifted to me off my Amazon wish list by another patron, Greg. I very much appreciate it. I was dying to use these model colors. He bought me that nice little kit so I could use it. So let's use a little bit in this model. They're pretty nice. I'll put a link to them if you want to use this that same kit. Reasonably priced, you get a lot of colors. And with models, you don't need big bottles of paint. So I went ahead and painted the shields and kind of didn't need to. But, um, you know, you can see here, I was having some fun, but the shield painting, and then it's brown, and then silver for the boss, and silver around the edge. But this part of the process took a long time, because there's so many of them. And, you know, maybe that's part of the reason why it was a, this kit's a skill level 3. But once the paint dries on those shields, now we're going to apply the decals, and this is a lot of fun, but this took a long time too. And this is what I did. I, I punctured holes in the center of the decal so they would fit over the boss and sit flat. The boss, the center of that shield is like a dimple, and um, the decals won't sit flat. They'd be kind of crinkled, so if you put a hole in them like that, then you can kind of just fit them right over the shield. But you take the decal and you soak it in water, and the instructions recommend 20 seconds. But for me, 20 seconds never seems to be long enough. I always wait longer. And then just slide them onto the shield like that. And then use something to wick up the water. Like this. 
and then just go to town. I, fig I don't know how long it took me to do all these various shields. It took a long time. They were a lot of work. But they came out good. And they're, they're kind of important because the way they sit are all the way around the edge of the boat, the ship. See, there you go. 64 shields. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, yeah, 16, 32, 64 shields. And there's two of each. So, and I kept the pattern correct, like, so it's the same on, like, one, sh one it, two of each. One goes on one side of the ship, one goes on the other side of the ship, if you wanted to be detailed about it. And I kept the exact same arrangement. So that shield I just put on there, on the other side of the ship, the same pattern is in the same location. Just seemed like a nice detail to do. But they're easy enough to glue on. Once they're dried, you just start gluing them on one at a time. That one's got a little crinkled. But I'm not going to show you a whole lot of that. We could take another 10 minutes just going one at a time, at a time, at a time, at a time. But there you go. Does look good though, doesn't it? And it is important which way they overlap. See how they overlap in the back? On the left is the back of the ship. And that those went on first. So um, here's another little tip. Sometimes in the instructions, like in that anchor, it'll say do not glue the part. Like the little rings on this anchor are not glued in. They just fit in. So you could move it if you want. You could kind of rotate the anchor if you wanted. But that's just something to notice when you're building a model. Sometimes you do not glue the parts. Keep an eye out for that. And see the anchor there is on the right of the ship and the little, that was the thick string and all wrapped up and I actually applied glue to that to hold it in place and to keep its coiled shape. So now let's put in just more parts and look, that's a couple of my parts fell there. That's okay, I fixed those. But all of this stuff is just standard assembly of plastic models, including the little, uh, what's this called, the plaque, which I painted black and gold. And then applied that to the ship. You know, this has ended up to be a long video after I edited it and edited it and edited it. But um, it came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Now the oars. These were a challenge because I was like, how am I going to keep all those oars in there and get everything straight and have it look good? Because there are six different sized oars for this, for this project. So what I did was I cut them all out, placed them all in, tried to line them up best I could so I could get a look and see what was right and what looked good. Once I was confident in all of that, then I applied glue, a cement, and straightened them all out to get them to look exactly where they were going to set. But that's the oars are a bit of a challenge because you can easily mess these up and they'd be irregular and not look right. But they came out pretty good. Not bad. I could have been a little bit straighter. And listen, so here you go. I just is a law of the universe. You know, when you're building a plastic model, the smallest part will be the part you drop on the floor. That's yeah, that's a written law in the universe. <laughs> I found it right there. This little tiny it's like a turnbuckle for this rigging. I found it. <laughs> Happens to me almost every single time. <laughs> All right. So that's part of the rigging. So here's the reason why I think this this model is a skill level three. Because the rigging is well, I guess it could be a lot more complicated like on a sailboat, which is the rigging is just ridiculously complex. But the rigging takes some detail work and some attention to, to the detail and you know it's a bit of a challenge so that's why we're a skill level three but fun nonetheless like look at this see that that actually kind of works you know tying all the strings and getting them in the right locations and and then you know tying the little knots and then getting them in place just right and they tell you every single one what string goes where to what piece to what little anchor hole and whatnot and so but hey yeah, fun I had enjoyed the rigging and now the rudder which I think might be the last no it's not really the last plastic part and then we're going to look a little bit more a little bit more of the rigging 
So the rudder goes in place and then a little, um, what would you call that, a little holder to hold it in place. So yeah. And I use tweezers for that. That's another tip for you. Use tweezers, use pliers, any tools that will help you. Now the sail. You cut it out of the, um, you just cut it out of the form that it's in. And then I tried painting the line. See that cross hatch line? I tried painting them. It did not come out good. So I ended up washing it all off and then just going with a marker. But uh, those attached to the, I don't know what that's called, the, that crossbar. There's a, there's a nautical term for that. The main something or other. But we need holes in that sail to lash it with little pieces of string to that piece. So I marked it off where I wanted the various holes. And then I used a pin vise to drill those holes. And you have to be careful if you're going to puncture holes because this plastic can crack. And I realize not everybody has a pin vise, but you know, just give that con some consideration. You might be able to heat up a pin and use that, uh, like a push pin, that might work. And here, this is what I was talking about. I ended up just going with a marker for these lines, the lashing across the sail seemed better than the painting because I was not doing a good job with the painting I just couldn't keep it looking like rope well that's yeah, okay most of it gets hidden by the decal same thing as the shields you soak it in water and then slide it on to your sail and well, that's a big decal I think that's might be the biggest one I've ever seen in terms of making a model but it went well. They're prone to crack and you have to be careful with them. But there we go. And that's it. We're almost done here. Thanks for sticking with me so long. Um, I do have a link to this model if you want to build it. I have links to the various stuff that I use all in the description of the video down below. The cements, the paints, and on the website is another full tutorial with more stuff. And hey, lots of model building stuff on my website too, if you like model building. There we go, more lashing, get that mainsail up there. And this took some time, but you see those uh, ropes, not ropes, it's cedar strings, isn't that fun? That's a lot of fun. Getting all those various strings in the, and like I said, the instructions tell you exactly where to put each string. From what part of the ship to the sail and whatnot, all of that, it's kind of fun. I enjoyed it. Skill level three. And one of these days, maybe I'll tackle a skill level four. The only problem about that is they, it's probably going to take a long time to build, you know, so I, I can't really, you know, keep the videos flowing. It takes, it absorbs a lot of time to build a skill level four or five. But, and there we go. The ship is done. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? I'm very happy with this. I could have painted it more. But the brown color, they do that on purpose. The brown color of the injection molded plastic. You know, it was already kind of ship-like. Thanks for watching. Listen, support me on Patreon. I could use the help. I really much appreciate my Patreons. Are very um, magnanimous, I guess is the right word. Very helpful to me. Thank you. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.